Summer has miraculously appeared in Ireland, and uh, this year it happens to be on a Saturday. <laughs> and while I'm loving the sunshine and the relative warmth, it actually means I've got to get on and fit this Nissan's air conditioning compressor that I've been putting off for ages, so uh, better get started. So the Land Rover official procedure for this actually says I've got to take out the cooling fan and the shroud and all of that and the accessory drive belt. Uh, very similar to when we did the alternator a few months back. However, from looking at the job and looking at the manual, I reckon if I take out this air box, take out possibly this intercooler hose and the ducting that goes down to the turbo, we might be able to slip the belt off of the air conditioning pump and get the pump out without having to take out that fan. Because although I've done it before, it's a pain in the ass and I'd rather not do it if I can avoid it. So we'll give it a go. A well-practiced manoeuvre now for me on the Range Rover, putting the bonnet into service mode. Next job, as ever, battery negative off. Okay, she's dead. So it goes without saying really, but obviously you need to make sure there's no gas pressure in the system before you take any part of it apart. Um, and this is why in the main that air conditioning systems are best less left to a professional. Um, the refrigerant itself is pretty dangerous. It's really bad for the environment. So if any, if any does happen to escape, it's pretty bad. So, so basically I'd say, yeah, unless you're very confident you've got the tools or you're very foolhardy like me, uh, leave this job to a professional. As you can see though, on my gauges, I've got no pressure in the high or low pressure sides of the system. So we're good to go ahead with tearing it apart. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, so next we're gonna take out this air box, which you guys saw me do recently on the service video. So, glow plug timers off again, or relays, whatever they are. Um, like that. And we can already see down there the target. Don't want to jinx it, but we might have a chance of getting it. Let's get this uh, engine cover off as well. Hello, my lovely. Yeah, there she is down there. So, so I think the next bit I'm gonna go for is this air feed pipe into this left-hand air filter. Uh, there's one eight mil bolt holding it in, and there's a small pipe on this side, which I think goes down to the turbo bypass valve. And then this main pipe obviously feeds into the turbo on this left-hand side of the engine. So a few jubilees to take off. And once that's out of the way, probably take this boost pipe off as well and then we should have a clear shot down to the belt tensioner there to get the belt off and also I think to the mounting bolts as well we should be able to get onto those and obviously the pipes on the aircon compressor so Okay, that's the uh, that's the pipe going down to the turbo cutoff valve off. It's just this uh, sort of bellowsy bit at the bottom that goes onto the turbo that I now need to get at somehow, probably from underneath. Next up, I'm going to raz off all the under trays under the front of the Range Rover. So, so that one that's kind of underneath the uh, engine itself, and then there's this front um, kind of bash guard as well. We'll get them off, and that should allow us to get to the bottom of the compressor and all the pipe work under there a lot easier. Okay, so we're heading underneath. Oh, the GoPro and the nut buster. We're going to bust off these 10 mils. Leave them on the driveway so they get stuck in the tyres. Top tip there. Oh, 
and that comes off. Anyhow, just like that. Right, I think we need to also get this guy off. Push a few more nuts. There we go, all those guys are off now. You can take off this, uh, you can take off this towing eye cover just by undoing these little uh, plastic screws there. That reveals the front row of screws on this. And now this thing should be ready to drop down. Let's give it a go. Oh, you know. Are you attached on the sides? Are you? Where else are you attached? Ah, I found another one. Okay, one more back here. Sneaky one. And that should drop out, which it does. Okay. So with those trays removed, it unveils a whole world of pipes and things. So that's our uh, transmission cooler there, which Mr. Bodsey used a few months back to do the mega flush. And then, moving a bit further back, we can see that there, put my finger on it, that there is the bottom of the pipe that I was looking at from above. So hopefully we can get to that and undo it easily enough from under here. It's still quite tight actually, because of all the subframe and stuff under here, it's quite, it's quite busy, but we'll see if we can get it undone. Okay, so that's that Jubilee off on the bottom. I think she's now, well it's looser anyway, Let's see if he'll come off now. There we go, there we go, that's that guy. Okay, looking a lot more accessible now. You guys can see that we've got this nice big space to start working in now. So we can actually start to get down to where the compressor is, which is not this guy, this is your power steering pump. It's actually all the way down here. That's just the point you, hopefully you guys can just about see there where my finger is. So pretty well buried. But I can probably get onto the belt tensioner now, which is good news. It means we'll be able to slip the belt off that bottom pulley, hopefully. So it's really, really hard to show you guys this, but hopefully you can see this is the low pressure aircon pipe running down here and it runs into this uh, block here which I think might be um, like a filter or something like that along those lines. I'm not an aircon expert but um, it runs down here and then there's, you, you, can't, you can't really see it on camera but there's a nut at the bottom of it and if you reach your hand around there's a nut on top as well. They're like 13 mil nuts. They're for the two pipes that go onto the air compressor, the low pressure and the high pressure side. So I've just undone the little mounting bolt there that secures it onto the engine. Um, I'm undoing the ones up the top here which connect it to the fan cowl, to point you in the right direction, just here. And hopefully that'll give me enough movement to, once I've undone it, get it out of the way so that it's not going to be in the way of the air compressor coming out off the engine. That's the plan. So I'm going to go in with my little ratchet and a 13mm socket and see how we get on with that as a first go. So I can feel the pipe, feel the nut. Yeah, I might actually need a very short extension on this, just to give me a bit more swing. Gone for a deep socket, see how that does. There I am. Oh, it's really tight. <laughs> now I just gotta hope I can undo it with this little quarter inch ratchet. <laughs> Here's the nut, and the pipe is now free. So you can pull that out carefully, try and free it up a bit around here. Out of the way, and you can see on there we've got our O-ring on the end, which we're going to replace in a minute. We'll tuck that up out of the way as best as we can for now. And that should give us access 
to the where are we? I'll find where I was again now. There's the hole. Right, there's the there's the top pipe. So again it's another it's another 30 mil nut which can be nice and tight again, so I'll give that same same method a go. A bit more space in there this time so I managed to get my 3 8 ratchet in. It makes it a lot easier. Still not exactly roomy, but more than enough to get your ratchet in. Onto the actual compressor bolts now and again super long snap-on ratchet that I thought would never be useful saving the day again bolts loose now there he is number one pretty crusty hopefully you guys can see my spanner sticking out there but actually this top bolt looks like it's easiest to get from the front here with a ratchet spanner so down we go Just have to have a little think about that one before I pick the right tool up. I'm actually meant to be live streaming with you guys tonight at 7 o'clock, so this job might end up rolling into tomorrow at this rate, but we'll see how we get on. So you've got to remember, this one goes in from the front, and the one underneath it with the long snap-on ratchet, so just so I remember for my own purposes. Okay, that's two. Okay, there's one more bolt holding this thing in and he's right at the back of the unit. Ow. So yeah, there's all three bolts out now, guys. Still didn't seem very willing to move, so I think it's probably got some um, little dowels in the holes just to, to locate it. So let's see if we can... It's wiggling now, but... There we go. All right, wiring's off. And... All right, out you come, you big bastard. Whee! There she is. Nasty. Oh, probably say that was on par with the alternator actually. Maybe a bit worse. Whew. It's going to be interesting getting the new one back in again. So here we go, new and old side by side. And we can see by the label on this one it's a Sandin, uh, Sandin manufacturer of this. So, uh, this will be the original one, I'm pretty sure. But it's done now over 200,000 miles. So this new Nissan's one, I'm pretty sure, is the OEM. Uh, if you buy one from Land Rover now, this is what you'll get. I'm not sure Sandon make them anymore, but could be wrong there. Either way, good to have it off. Now what I'm wondering is, so I've never fitted an AC pump before, and certainly not one on a vehicle like this, is whether I should leave these caps on for now, until it's in position, stop any crap getting in there, and to protect the seals. And I think to stop the oil getting out as well, because I think this should be pre-charged with oil. So I'll probably leave them on, I reckon. I think this bit here where the wire goes into it is actually the valve that everybody talks about that sticks on these. Um, that causes the aircon to stop working. So it's just held in with a circlip on there. Maybe we'll have a look at that in a bit. Once I've got this all uh, sorted on the Range Rover. Maybe we'll pull this out and see if we can see if there's anything wrong with it. It'll certainly be interesting. All right, let's see what this is going to be like to get back in again. Fun, I'm guessing, is the word. There we go. Connected. Job done. Right, put the tools away. I wish. Woo! You're really <laughs> completely blind on this job. I can't see if there's any pipes or anything in the way down there, you know, stopping it from going back. I and mean, you can't see it from underneath either, so we just gotta hope some prayers, hope some prayers. I'll have a quick recce underneath and see if I can see anything at all. With a lot of jiggling and a bit of wiggling, I managed to get it to get back roughly into the right position now, so. We're in a position now where I can try and start lining up the bolts and getting them in. 
<sighs> so that's it, we're on day two of the air conditioning compressor replacement and uh, thankfully, I don't want to jinx it, but we've had two days of good weather in a row, so it's given me enough time to do this job, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Um, yeah, situation update, basically the new compressor is in position. I can't remember what the last thing I filmed was, but um, in position, I just need to lift it up into the actual final position, put the bolts in and try and get them started, which is going to be tough. <laughs> it's not easy. I'm starting to wish I'd taken off the power steering pump now to make my job a bit easier, but uh, we'll see how we get on. So back to the GoPro view. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm talking about here. So pump's in position. I've somehow managed to lift the front of it up just enough to get that front bolt in across the top. And you guys might be able to even see it from on the GoPro angle there. Uh, and then just done that up loosely. And now I'm gonna go underneath, push the back up and try and get one of the bolts in at the back. So then it'll be located in the right position then. And I can uh, sort everything else out around it, all the pipes and bits and bobs and clips that need to go back on again, so. Uh, the two front bolts are in to the uh, compressor there, so you've got one on the top and one on the bottom at the sort of front half of the compressor. So now the only one that's left is the really tricky one right at the very back, and it's especially tricky because it kind of starts halfway across the compressor. So um, I'll crawl underneath and try and show you from under there what I'm dealing with, but yeah, this isn't fun. Right, under here, hopefully you guys can see just there. Oi, oi, oi. It's a bit tight under here. The range has kind of dropped itself down a bit. Uh, I've just about got the bolt started um, by hand. So I'll do it up as much as I can by hand and then see if I can get a tool in from the top, which I think is how I got it out. So we'll go for that. Do it up and then we're on to putting the pipes back on tidying everything up and hopefully well we've got to put the belt on as well but yeah we're making progress we're slowly making progress oh don't you go loose on me you bastard come on ratchet click you can do it so all three bolts are now in the compressor it's bolted into position um, I left the caps on the, on the compressor ports just so that with all that fiddling around that we didn't get any dirt in the compressor because that would be very bad. So now my next job is to take those caps off, which is 2,000 mm nuts. Get the pipes back on again, get them engaged, redo all the pipe and cable management and stuff. Put the belt on, put everything back together, and we should be done. Then I can go and lie down like those two over there. And we're getting somewhere now. The old one-handed ratcheting backhand technique. I'm sort of sorry guys, I'm doing this video as a sort of kind of running updates rather than filming much of what I'm doing, literally because it's it's pretty impossible to get the camera anywhere near what I'm looking at. Um, I can't even I can't even see what I'm looking at when I'm trying to attach these pipes, so so you guys definitely aren't gonna see it with the camera. But I have managed to just get the see if I can squeeze the GoPro in here. No idea if you guys can see that or not, but I managed to squeeze that first connection on now, the top one. So we can get a nut on there, pull it down, and then go for the second one at the bottom, and that'll be both the pipes reconnected. Ooh, we're getting there. Land Rover just didn't want you know the mechanics to, to miss out, so they put these lovely um, studs in here, just sticking out into the uh, engine bay there, just to catch the back of your hand like that. So you, so you get these lovely marks all over the back of your hand, just so you can prove that you've been working on a Range Rover. It's really thoughtful of them. Right, so it's looking a little bit neater down there now. Um, both aircon pipes connected, as I said. Uh, a couple of the little mounts put back on again, one here and one underneath for the aircon pipes. It's a super duper long snap-on wrench. One of the very few pieces of snap-on equipment in my toolbox. And just to prove it, there's a really cheap, <laughs> crappy Nielsen socket on the end of it. It's probably blasphemy to do that, but never mind. So it's 21 mil, so I don't know if I mentioned that or not. Uh, which fits onto the tensioner here. You want to go down with it. Down like that.
just enough to slip the belt over. And I'll keep tension on it just while I check it's all in position over this pulley. All right, now the belt's back on, we can pretty much start reassembling everything else, I'm pretty sure. I'm kind of taking it steady because I'm not really in any massive rush. Um, I just want to make sure I don't miss anything and make sure everything gets back into the right position that it's supposed to be in. Um, this, there's a lot of uh, little pipes and wires and bits you know, that can easily get um, pushed aside and, and then dragged into the, uh, into the belt or something like that on the Range Rovers. You guys can see how tight it is down here. So yeah, just trying to make sure everything that is back in its place. Little clip down there that I just missed. So yeah, it's, it's important to just go through everything. Look, physically look at every pipe you can and trace it. Check, does that look right? Does that look like it's supposed to be there? Boost pipe back on. One thing that amazed me recently, I was watching Ben's video where he serviced his 3.6. I'll put a link in the description and up above if you guys haven't seen it. But um, Ben's engine bay on his 2010 or 2009 um, L322 is so clean compared to this. It looks like brand new. Um, I'm guessing that's just a combination of mileage. He's only done 80,000 80, miles or thereabouts. I'm over 200 on this now. Um, another thing in Ben's engine bay that I really liked is the fact he actually has a physical dipstick. I'd, I'd kill for a dipstick. Um, I really hate the all computer design where you just read it on the dash on this. Like You, you don't know what you've got in the car really until, you know, you know, when you're doing an oil change like I did the other week, it's, it's mostly guesswork in terms of getting the oil right. You know, you kind of assume you've got it right. You check it on the dash, which kind of seems to fluctuate from day to day. I'd much rather just prefer a dipstick. Why can't they just keep it simple? Probably because there's no bloody room for a dipstick in this engine bay. All right, let's see if we can get this guy back in again then. So he's gonna kind of go down like that. This is where I've got to kind of figure out which side of these pipes to go. So that's roughly in position. Roughly, roughly. This guy's back in, bolted in, Jubilee done up that end, small pipe that goes down to the crossover valve, done up. Again, I'm just going to have another quick look round. Okay, that's the last bit. We're going to chuck the air box in. There we go. It's back in position. You can go back on there. Little rubbery thing is connected properly in the wing. Lovely jubbly. Might even give that a bit of a wipe with a bit of WD-40 so I can uh, impress Ben with his nice clean engine bay. How about that? There you go Ben, what do you reckon to that? Shiny enough. I've gone a bit quiet now guys, this is always a bit I'm a bit nervous about when you've had it all apart like that, the first start up. Not really knowing what can happen, it should be fine but it's always a bit nerve wracking. You're in a good position where you can witness the carnage if anything bad happens. Yeah, I think we're good to go. Right. Start, 
So as you guys might be able to see, that glorious summer weather we had last weekend has now gone. We're back to the normal kind of grey, miserable Irish weather. However, I did get the air conditioning system gassed up earlier this week and it held gas. I was kind of a little bit worried that the garage would put the air conditioning machine on and there'd be some horrible leak somewhere caused by my works, but uh, no, it held gas really well. It took 700 grams as the sticker on the front suggests it should take um, and the air conditioning now functions absolutely perfectly. So that is going to wrap it up for this video guys. Uh, I've got more footage where I did a bit of testing on the AC system and I also took the old compressor apart for a look. But I'm going to take that footage and put it into a separate bonus video uh, which I'll upload in a couple of days. Just to keep the length of this one down a bit so look out for that video if you're interested. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Maybe you learned something new. I know I did during the process of making it. And if you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.